Hello! In this video, I am going to present an experiment of mine. How does the usage of a planetary gearbox affect the efficiency in an electric drivetrain which uses two motors? When you look at entry-level EVs, their range rarely exceeds 350 km, and that's mostly in ideal conditions. For mid-spec EVs, this is more like 450 km. For some people, that may seem like enough, but comparing that to the average gas engine car that can easily do 800 plus kilometers on a single gas tank, which can be refilled many, many times faster than an EV, some markets are bound to prefer gas cars. Some manufacturers are trying to combat the range issue as much as they can. The simplest solution is just to get a bigger battery. Most modern EVs do have that option, but that doesn't solve everything, since this option also adds a significant amount of weight, and it also increases the charging time needed. Another solution most manufacturers employ is the usage of motors on both axes, and even on each of the wheels, to increase the drivetrain efficiency. Now, I hear you ask, how does that solve anything? It is pretty clever, actually. When we look at an efficiency curve of a normal motor used in an electric vehicle, in this case, we assume that it's a brushless permanent magnet AC motor. We can see that at very low speeds and high torque requirements, and at higher speeds, the motor is not as efficient as in the middle region. By adding this second motor, you can theoretically split the load between the two motors, and then get an overall higher efficiency. Of course, this solution is not without its drawbacks. Since both motors' output are connected to the wheels, this adds rolling resistance to the car, which reduces the range. Then, if a permanent magnet motor is used on the both axes, when one motor is powered and the other is not, the non-powered motor induces current in its windings when the wheels rotate, which adds even more resistance. This can be solved by using a less efficient induction motor on one axle that doesn't suffer from this induced current issue, and a permanent magnet motor on the other which is more efficient. This is actually what Tesla does, but still it's not the best solution since the addition of another type of motor complicates the electronics. Now though, I thought that this dual motor concept can be used in a different way. The inspiration for this comes from hybrid vehicles. How about connecting two permanent magnet motors, those are the efficient ones, to a single axle using a planetary gearbox? A planetary gearbox is basically a gear set that can have two inputs and a single output. The outer gear, the ring gear, can drive the output with a defined ratio, and the inner gear, the sun gear, can also drive the output simultaneously with another defined ratio. What is more interesting about the planetary gearbox is that the input shafts are basically independent from another. I mean, they are not independent as in they do not affect each other. In fact, they do a lot. It's just that both of them can rotate at different speeds. One input can be stationary, the other spinning. The input shafts can even go in opposite directions. It's just that the friction of one input doesn't really affect the other. This gives us the ability to control each of the motors for the optimum efficiency figures. So using this planetary system, we can theoretically distribute the load between the two motors effectively without adding too much friction, moving parts, or different types of motors. To prove this theory though, I built a test stand to compare this system against a single motor. I decided to build a makeshift dyno where I can measure the output power of the motor at every RPM it operates at, and at every power percentage. To measure the output power, I decided to use a flywheel. First, the acceleration of the flywheel can be calculated by taking the derivative of its speed time function. By knowing the acceleration of the flywheel, and also its inertia, which we can easily calculate, we can calculate the torque the motor is putting out. Therefore, we can also calculate the output power of the motor. Power is equal to torque times rotational speed. To find the efficiency, we just need to compare the power draw of the motor to the output power. From the start, I knew that I was going to use my 3D printers to bring this project to life. 
so I designed all of the parts accordingly in Fusion 360. All of the parts were designed so that they can be easily printed by anyone. I printed most of the parts in PETG since it's tough and has a higher melting point than PLA, which helps with gear meshing stability. You really don't want the teeth of your gears to melt and fuse together, which often ends catastrophically. In this photo, you can see the first version of the printed test stand. After the first experiments though, I saw that there's a lot to improve, so I designed and printed the second version of the test stand. Apart from some better looking parts and a generally more stable construction, I also added a brake to one of the motors. The brake is activated with a spring which compresses dog teeth onto a disc on the shaft of the motor, which stops it from rotating completely. Servos inside the brake assembly push the calipers back and deactivate the brake. The brake is there to stop this. Now we come to the electronics of this whole thing. To measure the acceleration of the flywheel, I needed to measure the speed of the flywheel first. At first, I decided to use an IR sensor to measure the speed of the output shaft, which worked. But since the module didn't work really well at higher speeds, I needed to reduce the accuracy of the system. The module's output was just getting too noisy. In the second version, I switched it to a Hall effect sensor, which worked out really well, netting me around 6 times more accurate results. Well, you also need to spin the flywheel to measure anything. In my experiment, I just used some 12 volt brushed DC motors. I know that it is not the same as a brushless permanent magnet motor, but their characteristics were similar enough to justify their use, as I really didn't have the time nor the money to order something from outside my country. To drive these motors, I just use some motor drivers that say that they can deliver up to 43 amps. Not really sure about that, but I connected a current measuring IC to the power inputs of these motor drivers and connected all of the parts to an Arduino. In the second version, I switched the Arduino to an ESP32 board with extra RAM, which I soldered onto a development board. I also got some higher end current sensors that could measure the input voltage while also having 10 times the resolution of the old sensors. The ESP32 was again controlled by a PC connected over USB, but this time the ESP32 could sample the sensors 20,000 times instead of just 600 during the 10 seconds the flywheel was spinning. This was made possible by the fact that the code I wrote made use of the extra RAM on the ESP32, which allowed holding all the data points. Then, that data was written onto an SD card and analyzed by the PC. Most of the data analysis took part on the PC. In the first version, since there weren't many points, I decided to use Excel. Yeah, I know, a controversial choice, but hear me out. As proving the hypothesis just meant that I needed to calculate the average efficiency of the drivetrain and show that on a graph, I just needed to create a heat map. Now, Excel has a grid which you can color using some arguments, and it does that automatically. I need to filter the data by overlaying functions onto that. Excel has that too. Yeah, so I created the first heat map in Excel. It is definitely not pretty, I do agree, but even this ugly graph was showing promising results. You can see how the addition of the second motor with a different gear ratio can improve the maximum torque and also efficiency at lower speeds. Of course, in the second version, since I had 20,000 data points, using Excel was not an option, so I switched to Python. There I used SciPy, which contains modules for optimization, linear algebra, integration, interpolation, special functions, FFT, and much more, to filter my data, and matplotlib to plot it all in graphs. The results you can see here. These results once again show how the addition of the second motor is a positive factor to the efficiency. As I couldn't really test the real world conditions, this is only a dyno, I can only speak about a 10% efficiency increase on average that I calculated by taking the average of the values in the area that can be covered by the motor with the higher speed. As I mentioned at the start, this way of implementing the dual motor system should reduce complexity and overall friction while also being able to provide higher efficiency and more torque. 
This single axle solution would also work really well on heavy duty vehicles such as trucks and buses. I also took part in a German science fair slash competition with this project with my friends. The competition's name is Jugendforscht. Uh, we had a lot of fun in this competition and in the first round we took first place and in the second round we took third place. This is a great achievement, I believe, especially when our native language isn't German. So it was a great experience for us documenting the experiment, doing the experiment and then presenting that in German in front of the juries. We also had the opportunity to talk with other students from many other countries. Although this competition is technically a national competition, German schools outside of Germany also count there. So it was generally a great experience for us. I give my thanks to my teachers who supported me and also my friends who were with me on this journey. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.